So with that, let me, um, so question one. Oh, this is fun one. I don't know if it's necessarily easy, but it's a vector question. I think that's why I haven't done it. Because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a chapter two question. It's not chapter five question. But in any case, um, now that we are here, it's time to do it. So it says, uh, two ropes are attached to a tree. And oh, all right, it, it's a, giving me things in coordinate um, representation. So I think I should just start drawing some axis so that I have some way to graphically represent what it is I'm going to be calculating. So it sounds like, um, don't know if these are always going to be identical. Are they? Um, you know what, uh, I think I got a particular version of the question that's uh, unhelpful, so let me do this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get a similar question and Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Let's do this one. <laughs> so let me draw the axis and uh, so that I have some way to graphically represent what it is I'm doing. So it says there are two forces uh, and they are giving it to me in this component of form and just saying my uh, F1 is uh, one, two, three, four, horizontal in the X direction and um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the y direction. So it's this point here. So the graphical representation of the force vector would be this one. This is my F1. And my second force, it's giving me components again. And there are different ways you can draw, I guess. Um, I'm just gonna draw them so that they share the same origin. So my F2 uh, goes one, two, three, horizontal in the x direction and one, two, three, four, five, six in the y direction. So somewhere here is where um, F2 is going to end up at. And in terms of adding them, uh, it's kind of simple. You can just add component by component. You can almost to see uh, how algebraically it works out. And the notations are actually designed for that. When you write down F1 plus F2, you know, just uh, copying this over, you might write down, okay, 4i hat plus 9j, that's F1, plus 3i hat plus 6j hat. And staring at this expression, you might say, oh, I got some, uh, like terms of i hat and like terms of j hat. So you collect like terms and say 4 plus 3, 7 i hat plus 9 plus 6, um, 15 j hat. And, uh, and that's the right answer. And this is kind of the strength of the algebra, which is that uh, there are, uh, the notations are built in such a way that sometimes you can just uh, follow the rules of the algebra and you'll get the right answer. That's uh, how the system is constructed to allow you to do that. Uh, now to the part B, uh, you have to do a little more drawing. So let me uh, draw a representation of that force vector. So the resultant vector, some of those two should uh, go somewhere. Oh, I guess I can actually do this. So four, five, six, seven, and nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So somewhere around here is where that resultant vector is, uh, net force. And to do uh, questions of like part B, um, kind of converting between this Cartesian representation and the polar representation um, or the magnitude and direction. What I recommend always is to draw the triangle that will always give you the correct answer with the least uh, chances for mistake possible. So the triangle I'm considering here is this triangle here. One of the triangle, the hypotenuse, will be the, the length of the vector. And one of the legs is the Y component. And the other leg is the X component. So this should be seven Newtons. This should be 15 Newtons. So the magnitude of the hypotenuse, it comes from the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. The square of this is sum of the squares of this. So the length here is the square root of the 15 squared plus the seven squared. 
you turn. I'll do that in calculator. And for the direction, uh, this is where you do have to be careful a little bit. Um, I guess um, first you want to look at the, what kind of angle you are dealing with. Are you in first, second, third, or fourth quadrant? When you're in the first quadrant, that's the easiest. You can just uh, kind of um, blindly use this formula of R, uh, theta is equal to arc tangent of y over x. Um, if you're doing that, it'll work out fine for here. Um, in the more trickier situations, what you want to consider is, so in situations like this where you are given the opposite and the adjacent side, write out um, the, the toa of soka toa. Um, the tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is the opposite. 15 newton over the adjacent seven newtons. And again, in this case, because your theta is an acute angle, uh, if you do arc tangent of this ratio, you'll get the angle. But uh, do watch out for when you are in the second quadrant or third quadrant or a fourth quadrant, it should be fine because uh, most calculators give you an angle in this range. But a second or third quadrant, you have to be careful. So let me get the numbers to plug in. Um, it's going to be, uh, so first the hypotenuse. Um, so it'll be 15 squared plus seven, oops, uh, 15 squared, 15 squared plus a seven squared is equal to that. Take the square root, 16.6. .6. I like to round to three significant figures. That should work most of the time. And uh, direction, angle theta, that's going to be 15 divided by 7, the ratio. Take the arc tangent, and I'm in degree mode, 60, oh, so 65 degrees. Okay, that should work. 